Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. We are extremely happy to conduct this lecture today because the topic is of my interest that is a lesion of mandible, a pattern based approach to a diagnosis by OPG. I have already got publications on these topics and my wife has helped me for all these things. I am also thankful for Dr. Rajni Joshi who has helped me in this project of uh, the article Lesions of Mandible, a pattern based approach to diagnosis by OPG and for a kind permission to present me this in this uh, lecture. So uh, let's get started to the topic that is pattern based. Every lesion of mandible on OPG has got a pattern and that pattern is extremely useful as far as uh, pathologies are concerned. Now here we go, we'll go and find out by details how the things are achieved. Now let's go to the introductory part of the lecture. OPG is an examination of mandible. It is done by using X-rays. So examination of mandible by using X-rays is called as OPG. Now it is a simple cost effectiveness and is getting more and more importance is because of orthodontic and patho orthodontic practice as well as the pathological appearances it we get on the OPG images. So reading of images on by pathology on OPG is extremely interesting. There is a broad coverage of facial bones in the OPG. What does it mean? When we take a OPG, we not only get teeth but also get TM joint, we get maxilla and we also get certain portions of the thyroid process. So these are the areas covered by OPG in addition to the tooth. So there is a broad coverage of facial bones. Now patient radiation dose is low. I repeat again, it's a low dose of radiation. Now if we try to go for 32 intraoral dental radiographs, it will give more exposure than one OPG. Now if we are taking temporomandibular joint by our conventional method that is open mouth, closed mouth, right side, left side that will give more radiation than one OPG. So that's how why we say it's a low radiation, low dose of radiation. Now convenience of examination for the patient. Patient just walks in and walks out. It's very easy for patient to come to get the examination done and to get the report and go. It's very easy. The images are in the form of E, so can be very easily transferred to the dental surgeon or to the orthopedic surgeon or to general surgeon or to cancer surgeon. It's very easy for us to transfer the images. Now, can be employed when restricted opening of mouth is there. What does it mean? Some mucosal fibrosis, which is a commonest thing, patient cannot open mouth. There may be some problem with the TM joint, arthritis, patient cannot open mouth. So intraoral dental derivatives are difficult. In that case, OPG scores better. Now it hardly takes 2 to 4 minutes. Hardly 2 to 4 minutes are required. Patient just a stand, a machine rotates around and an image is produced. So it's very easy. Now a very useful aid in patients education and case presentation. Now as we are seeing, we can have good series of pathologies. They can be stored easily because of e-presentations. They are available on the, they can be stored on hard disk and a small space is required and the images quality can be retained. So it is another advantage of the OPG. The images can be retained in a clarity or detailed form in a very economical way and a very long duration. Now what are the indications? Indications include fracture, fracture of the mandible, fracture of the TM joint. In that case, OPG is very good because patient cannot open mouth. Second is dislocated jaw. Again, same thing, patient cannot open jaw. You have to go for the OPG. At this time, the OPG is by open and closed mouth. But a dislocated jaw is unilateral or bilateral. The movement will be seen accordingly. Now third is the infection. Dental infection, mandible infection, or ATM joint infection, excellently detected by OPG. Now, uh, dentition, that is the uh, dental surgeon. The need for orthodontist work as well as for the assessment, then the uh, caries, uh, whether it is deep, it is superficial, then whether it is pulp involvement, whether it is root involvement, so extremely useful 
for the dental surgeon. Now for surgical planning, surgical planning is for two. One thing is by the oncologist surgeons when they know how, where the disease has been, how much is the bone involvement. So also to a orthopedic surgeon when he knows how many fractures are there and how to fix them or how to treat them. Now because of the specific appearances, it narrows down the differential. Now since the narrowed down differential, we can come to a characteristic appearance and the disease can be detected or diagnosed well on the OPG. Now what are the benefits of it? It's a painless. Then nothing to be painful. Then it's easy, available everywhere, machine is low cost, OPG cost is low, then there is no radiation. When we say no radiation, it is as compared to the uh, availing this or taking this on different type of excess. So radiation dose will be low. Then the then is the protection. So we can protect patient during OPG by uh, giving the layer gown to wear so that only the head portion or teeth portion is exposed to the radiation. Now risk can be advantages of OPG. What are the risks versus what are the advantages? Obviously what we feel are the risk are low, advantages are more, but in spite of that, sometimes the risk is more and we do not go for it. Now what are they? Exposure to excess radiation is not considered to be harmful since it is extremely small dose. So that will, in our radiology it is maximum permissible dose, it falls in the MPD, minimum permissible dose, then uh, that fits in and there is no problem as far as small radiation is concerned and it is extremely small there is extremely small chances of developing radiation cancer. So, practically, as is nothing. There is there are no chances you can consider. Theoretically, there are chances. Yes, I agree. However, the potential benefit outweighs this small risk. So, advantages are more. Risk is very small. Why not go for it? And radiologists must be familiar with the artifacts so that repetition will be low. In minimum dose, you can complete the examination. And if Artifact of obscuring the pathology, a radiologist will be difficult. It will be difficult for radiologist to give the opinion. And sometime after the OPG, to get in more details, the IOP is required because sometimes OPG is technically difficult of that reason. Especially when the jaw is distorted, when the teeth are not in proper shape, then in that condition, the OPG may be having limited applications. Now. If we want to diagnose a lesion properly, we have to project it properly. Now, if we want to project it properly, if we want to see it in nice ways, we should know physics. Because if we know physics, we know what are the limitations and we also know how to overcome these problems. Now, the collimation for X-ray is done at two places. The first place is where the source is. Source is a tube from the where the X-rays are produced. And second is the object where the patient is. And third is the film where you are taking the projection or whether you are taking the radiograph. Now let's go to one after another. At the image receptor, at the image receptor, there is a collimator. Then at the source, there is a collimator. Now I let's see the how these two collimators work. First is your lead collimator at exit beam that gives you exit of a beam in a vertical slit manner. Second is the at recept again you have got a vertical slit. So two vertical slit has to be in perfect position so that a only clear object will be filmed and which are the obscure or blur will not be imaged. So uh, in spite of movements, in spite of movements the object which remains stationary as compared to two moments will be projected sharp. Now let's go to it in more detail. Due to collimation at two ends, the image is displayed sharply. Fine. Both the moving at the same time. Why the image is sharp? Because both are moving in same speed huh? and in same direction. That's why whatever comes in that plane only will get sharply focused. This causes moving images to appear stationary. Now how we will understand it is going to be an illustrative diagram in which we have marked A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D are the object to be radiographed. 
Now, how they move, how the swords move, we are going to see it very shortly. And first see it theoretically. Due to other object outside the ABCD arch, maybe at the center of protection, the movement is not as in the speed as that of the object which are ABCD. So only ABCD will be clearly focused. Object between the XA source and the center of the rotation. Okay, object that we have marked in the, the diagram, which moves in the opposite direction of the receptor and the shadows are also blurred. Okay, so only A, B, C, D are the four objects that comes in a sharply position. Now you are seeing these two rotatory movement. Uh, there are two rotation movement. One is in the this direction. This direction is the one. And this direction is the second. Now what is happening is source is from this side. That is XA source is the XA view, which is emitting radiation. Now two drums are there. One drum is moving in this direction and second in opposite direction. In this direction, drums are moving. Now focus at A, B, C, D. You'll be, you'll be also, you will not need any explanation to, you will not need any explanation of why only A, B, C, D gets sharply uh, focused on the film. So film will focus the object A, B, C, D only and the remaining object will get blurred. Especially two dot which represent the center will get blur. Now here you have seen two things. One thing is ABCD object has to be at periphery, number one. And other than that everything is getting blurred. So in other words, if mandible has to get focused properly, it has to be positioned properly. If mandible is not positioned properly, we sure comes before and after, we'll get same treatment as that of the required thing. So you should have two planes now. One thing is the horizontal plane and second is the mid sagittal plane. Mid sagittal plane is a vertical plane. Now how we focus? We see, we position the patient in the, the machine and there is a mirror in front of you. There is collimator light. The collimator light falls on your face and the reflection is seen in the mirror. So you know a mid sagittal plane is properly fit. Now the second is Frankfurt plane. Frankfurt plane is a technician sees from the side and there is a collimator light to guide you where these Frankfurt lines are. Now, mid sagittal plane has to be perpendicular. Frankfurt plane has to be parallel. Now, funny position is required for, for getting a stability. Now, movement are not good for the OPG. To prevent the movement, patient has to be fixed. So, best is to position the tongue at the roof of the mouth and instruct patient to remain still, the machine is rotating. As long as machine is moving around the head, patient should not move. If patient moves again, the object A, B, C, D go here and there and they will get blurred. So if you want them to be sharp, they have to be in the same position. Now this here, it is showing same. The sliding path of the center of the rotation. There are two terms what we have shown you. The center of the rotation moves as the XA view rotates around the back of the head. When the center of the rotation is on the right side, the image of the left side is being made. Now, this is the same it shows you in how illustration way. Now, whatever we discussed just now is seen here dynamically. Now, you can appreciate the tube, you can appreciate the film and in between is the head. And not all the head get focused. That's interesting. Not, not all the head get this, uh, focused. Only the teeth get focused. So which are at the periphery will get focused, which is at the center end will not get focused and they will unsharp. So certain object, unsharp, most of the object will make sharp object look different. Now with this we have to take patient for the radiography. Now being a complicated process and where we need a patient's cooperation, it is a nice way to explain patient how the procedure works. Now a radiographer explains the patient. First, we ask patient to stand and tell him that two to three minutes patient cannot move. If that is not possible, then again we have difficulties. Now patient has to stand for three to four minutes. Movements are enemies of good radiograph. So we explain patient, stand still, don't move, position your tongue in such a way that your jaw will remain steady. Now another thing is procedure takes around two to four minutes that needs to be informed to the patient that it might take two to four minutes. Now, 
dispose your mouthpiece while it is given. Mouthpiece is a uh, straight angle and there is a uh, plastic coating over that, that is a plastic bag over it. So one thing we have seen is ABCD has to be in the proper plane. So two teeth cannot go away from each other, they have to be positioned. Now to position the uh, teeth position, central inside the position, best way is to keep a mouthpiece. And ask patient that the upper teeth and lower teeth must touch the mouthpiece. So once that touches, it comes in the proper arch. If it doesn't touch, then there will not be any sharp pictures. Now there are two handles for the machine to be fixing you. They are fixed. So hold the machine with the well, there are, uh, hold the machine with your two hands and try to be steady. Now patient use an idea that machine will move without hurting patient. The machine will not hurt you. It has got its fixed rotation. It will wait rotatively. But sometimes what happens is it touches the shoulder. So what patient thinks is something is going to happen wrongly. So that idea is given to the patient that while moving the arch, you keep your shoulders down. In case if your shoulder gets elevated, machine may brush it or machine may touch it, but not to get worried. That will not harm anyway patient. Now this is the uh, machine. This is now you see how it is operated. See now how the machine operates. Now from where the radiation start, machine will take little before position so that when the arch will start moving, it will reach its speed in optimum ways. Now the technician puts in a slide. The technician puts in a uh, cassette, he slides it inside and fix it in such a way that it is it will not move. Now left side is the tube. Right side is the cassette. Now cassette has placed when it was out. Now it has gone to the opposite side. So in other words, when machine is going to move, the cassette is also going to move from one end to another end. You can appreciate it and you can see it while the rotation is going on. You can see the cassette is also moving. The tube is also moving. The only person who is not moving is the patient. He is in the center steady. And this is what is explained to the patient that it will not harm you but it will rotate around you and there are two things which patient must know is when the machine starts and when the machine stops this is by means of a whistle there is a whistle to the machine once patient uh, is when the procedure started the whistle starts blowing and then when the machine stops the whistle stops and the technician tells him thank you now let's come to what are the advantages of OPG. It's a very useful for jaw examination when intraoral radiographs are difficult for a technical reason. Then particularly temporal mandibular joint and third molar. Temporal mandibular joint is deep, difficult to get on intraoral. Third molar sometimes may not be straight, it may be personal impaction. So to get root of it will be still more difficult by intraoral, but OPG does it well. The temporal mandibular joints can be assessed dynamically. You have to go for open and closed mouth. Now here there are certain radiation saving measures to the machine. So when the open and closed mouth X-rays are taken, machine is on only when PM joints are projected. So open and closed mouth on both sides come on same film with same exposure as that of the single OPG. So it is radiation saving. Now entire body of pathology is the irreversible size. What does it mean? Now if you are going intraoral, it will fix to the lower end of the jaw. It will not go below. So if the roots are below, if the pathology is going down the, the mandible, the intraoral film will not pick it. Versus OPG has got till the uh, lower border of mandible, it will be very clearly seen. So boundaries of pathologies superior, inferior, anterior, posterior will very nicely seen, clearly projected on the X-rays, on the film. Now location, periphery, sharpness, internal density, then effect of the surrounding structures. What are the surrounding structures? One thing is the tooth, second is the mandible. Now expansion region of the mandible can be picked, they can be diagnosed, they can be root, they can be displaced roots, whether the tooth is displaced from the root, from the main or otherwise can be easily detected. Now, not all will. There are certain limitations. It's not the wonder. So, as other investigation, it has got certain 
limitations. Now, what are the limitations? There are many superimposed anatomical structures. Now, if you take anterior central or if you take the central incisors, you are projecting from the back. So, your neck, your cervical spine, all are in the pathway. So, there are a lot of superimposing factors. As far as possible, machine tries to eliminate, the arch tries to eliminate, but it has got anatomical limitations, not all the patients, not all the structures, or not all the types of mandible. So there are certain times the superimposing shadows may be difficult to eliminate. Especially they are the maxilla, second are the PM joints, they will get superimposed and it will be difficult for them and hard parity that may superimpose the pathology. Then patient has to stand for 2-3 minutes. Quite possible patients are hemiplegic. Quite possible the small children may not stand for that long. Or quite possible we need excess of babies. So in that it is limitation. We say sorry we cannot. The small children move because of the sound number one and because of the mechanical movement. When they see something is moving around here, they start looking like this here and here and that causes the unsharpness. So it is sometimes difficult to control these movements of a small child. Uh, I am very thankful you are giving your time. So it's really my sincere thanks for giving me your valuable time. Please note, the diagnosis is not a race. It's not a number game. It's a process. This is a process. Be part of this process and enjoy the feast of knowledge. I am Dr. Anil Zashi, coming off till we meet again. Take care, do a lot of uh, OPGs, analyze them, try to put knowledge in that and give your best to the patient.